had students a couple weeks ago in our Zoom meeting, you got to vote on where we delivered the next devotional from, and you chose from up in a tree. So I'm going to attempt to climb this tree here, and then we'll get started. Here we go. In our last video, Mr. Hornback covered the question why Jesus, our Redeemer, the one who saves us from our sin, has to be truly human. So today what we're going to talk about is why Jesus has to be truly God. Now, you have to remember, Jesus has two natures. He's the only one like this. He's both fully God and fully human at the same time. That can be a difficult uh, concept to grasp, so let's talk more about that and how it's possible and why that's important. So remember that Jesus was born onto the earth, and while he was in human form, walking uh, this earth as a human, he was able to perfectly follow God's law for us. He had no sin whatsoever, and because of that, because he was able to live a perfect life, he's the only one that's capable of taking the punishment for our sin. He's the only one that can perfectly fulfill God's law for us, and therefore, he's the only one that can be allowed to take the punishment for our sins. To help us understand this more, I want to actually look at a story, not found in the Bible, but a story made for children called The Prince and the Pauper. You may have heard about this story before, and I'll recap it briefly. There, were, there was a prince who lived in a castle with his mom and dad, the king and the queen, who wanted to go out and see what the world was like. And one day he had his chance when a really poor boy called a pauper wandered into the castle grounds and when the two boys ran into each other, they realized they looked exactly the same, and the prince realized this was his chance to get out and see the world. So he and the poor boy switched places. The prince took the place of the poor boy, and the poor boy got to live in the castle. Now, the, the poor boy had a great time. He was able to live in the palace with the king and the queen and experience what it was like to be a prince, but the prince had to go live like the poor boy did. And the problem with this is that the poor boy had a really mean father who was extremely mean to him and abused him and did not take good care of him. So the prince, for the first time, got to experience what it was like to live a hard life. If you lived in the most beautiful place in the whole world, would you want to leave or trade places with someone? Probably not. Do you know of anybody else, any other stories you can think of where somebody left a wonderful place if you thought about Jesus, who left heaven to come down to earth and live among all the people on the earth, then that would be the one example that I can think of too. Similar to the story of the Prince and the Pauper, this is a much bigger example for what it means to leave something wonderful to go and have to live among something that would be a lot harder. So let's go back to our question. Why must our Redeemer, Jesus, be truly God in order to forgive our sins? First, I want to show you somewhere in the Bible where it shows us that Jesus is truly God. In the book of John, in the very first chapter, in the first verse, it says something that is very important for us to understand. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, this is really important because it shows us that the Word, which another, another word for the Word would be Jesus, it shows us that Jesus was God, and he was with God from the very beginning, and Jesus was God. Let me read one other verse from uh, John that helps us a little bit more. It says in John 1 14, And Jesus became flesh, and he dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This verse is important because it shows us what we celebrate at Christmas. It shows us that Jesus came to the earth as a baby and then grew up to be a man. And as he grew up, we got to see how much full of grace and truth he was as he lived a perfect life. I want to share one more verse with you. This one is from 2 Corinthians 5.22. It says, God made Jesus, who had no sin, to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What this verse is showing us is that only God is capable of taking away our sin. Jesus had to be fully God to take away our sin because only God himself could bear the punishment for all of these sins that we have. And for those who trust in him, he's able to remove our sin because of what Jesus did for us. Because Jesus was a human and he lived a perfect life, he could be a qualified substitute for us for our sin. 
Jesus requires us to have no sin whatsoever in order to be able to get into heaven one day. And by Jesus dying, having no sins at all and taking our punishment, God is able to look at us as if we have no sin. If Jesus wasn't actually God, Jesus wasn't, wouldn't have had authority to pronounce our sins forgiven. I want to share one more story with you, and this is a really neat story. It's from the Bible, and you'll have to go and read the full chapter on your own if you want to see more information for what this is about. But in Mark chapter 2, there is a story recorded there that shows a story about some friends who had a lot of great ambition to help a friend out. These four friends took a paralyzed man who couldn't walk, and they brought him to see Jesus because they heard Jesus was going to be at somebody's house that day. So there was no way to get to Jesus because everybody also wanted to see Jesus and there was no room to squeeze through. So what they did was they climbed this, this house's roof and they climbed onto the top and they dug a hole into the roof and they lowered the friend down on his mat down to the floor so that they could get to Jesus. Isn't that crazy? And when Jesus saw them, he said something really interesting. He said, the, the Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, when he said that, some of the other teachers of the law that were there in this, in this house, they got kind of angry as they were thinking, only God can forgive sins, so this person is committing blasphemy. They're, they're trying to say they're God, but they didn't really believe Jesus was God, so to them this was a sin and this was a problem. And Jesus knew that they were thinking these things. So Jesus said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up and take your mat and go home. What this story shows is that Jesus had authority to forgive sins because he was God. So, he, so to prove that he was God, he also healed the man. But the more important part of the story is that he could forgive the sins because he was God. I want you to go read Mark chapter 2 and read it for yourself. It's a great story to remind us of this truth. This really important truth that Jesus forgives our sins. And that he could do so because he was perfectly sinless while he lived on earth. Alright, now I've got to get down from the tree. Let's see if I can make it.